Palawan News. Probing into the critical issues. Holding authorities accountable. Catalyzing positive change. Behind the news. Join Palawan News. Saturday, 8 in the morning, as we discuss on detail the pressing issues in Palawan. Hosted by veteran journalist Redemto Anda. Behind the news. Credible. Independent. Fearless. Nito lamang Martes, November 20, sa Bayan ng Kulyona, ipinagdiwang ang 10-year anniversary ng Kulyon Sanitarium and General Hospital. Kasabay nito ay ang muling pagbubukas ng Kulyon Museum and Archives, kung saan nakadisplay ang iba't ibang memorabilia, medical journals, kabilang ang ilang historical relics na may kaugnayan sa medical history ng leprosy control sa naturang munisipyo. Ayon kay Dr. Arturo Cunanan Jr., head ng Kulyon Sanitarium and General Hospital, ang museum ay sumasalamin din sa tagumpay laban sa leprosy. Malaki naman ang pasasalamat nito sa lahat ng mga tumulong at sumuporta upang muling maisaayos at mabuksan sa publiko ang museum. Matatanda ang bago pa naging isang ganap na munisipyo ang lugar ay naging isolated ito dahil dito dinadala ang mga mayroong leprosy noong American Occupation Period. Behind the News Now we're back. This Saturday's edition of Behind the News is very special because we are here in Colon. Uh, together with uh, Dr. Arturo Cunanan, the head of the Culion Sanitarium and General Hospital. Today is the, this week is the 10th anniversary of the health facility. This is a very, very unique health facility, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, sabi nga ni Dr. Cunanan kanina, this is the only facility which has a, uh, which has a museum which hosts a museum. Wala kayong ibang makikita ng hospital na mayroong museum. And this museum, we're going to talk about this, uh, is, is very interesting. You have to come here and see for yourself. Ano ang meron dito sa uh, Kulyon Archives, uh, Kulyon Museum and Archives. But be, uh, before we go fur further, pabatiin na natin si Dr. Arturo Cunanan. Um, magandang araw sa viewers ng Palawan News. Uh, Palawan News. At uh, welcome to Kulyon. And congratulations, Doc. 10th ten year anniversary ng uh, Kulyon Hospital. Yes. And uh, you also piggyback yeah. the relaunching ng Kulyon Museum. Yes. Uh, I understand the little I know, the little I know about the Kulyon Museum is a national treasure, Doc. Yes. yes. Uh, it, it is inscribed in UNESCO as a national... As a, as a Memories national, of the world. National memories of the world. Kung baga, eh, this is a legacy not just to the people of Kulyon, but this is the legacy, a legacy of Kulyon to the world. Kaya dapat itong pangalagaan. What is in the museum? Can you summarize this for our uh, viewers today? So thank you for this opportunity uh, to discuss about the Kulyon Museum in Archives. Um, if you go to Kulyon, you must visit the Kulyan Museum and Archives to know the history of the place. Um, everybody, when you hear about the word Kulyan, as I mentioned earlier, Kulyan is defined by the disease. Kulyan, associated with the word. Yes, leprosy. associated with the word, always synonymous with the word leprosy. And Kulyan being the oldest and existing leprosarium for, for leprosy, um, has been noted for this disease for a very long time. And through the years, uh, with the good work on research and treatment, we have eliminated leprosy as a public health problem. And what remains are very few people who have been here for a long time. And we don't like to lose, to, to lose the history and lessons from the past. That's why uh, as early as in the 1980s, I have started collecting memorabilia, documents, photos, interviews, and other things. And dreams that someday there will be a museum or a place where you can put this as a repository of all these uh, valuable uh, materials, historical artifacts, that will someday 
tell about what kulyon is, or what kulyon was, and how the people, especially the patients, live, and how it transformed from an isolated and segregated island to now a new municipality. And the museum is an accomplishment of the dream, huh? Yes, the uh -huh. museum is an accomplishment, but indeed of a big dream and a big journey. Yes. Because um, um, it's very hard to secure resources mm -hmm. to start up a museum. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, of the uh, of Kang, Dr. Punana, you know, not to patronize, but a lot of people were quite impressed yes. with the museum. I personally was impressed with the museum. The way it was curated, the materials you have there, I mean, you really have to come and see it for yourself. Yes. The impact, the message, the impact of the message that that uh, that the museum brings to your visitors is a very powerful museum. Yes. And, uh, and congratulations for that. Yeah, thank you very much. I think that's one of the objectives of mm -hmm. establishing the Colleen Museum. You know, even though leprosy is a rare disease now, mm -hmm. leprosy um, contributes a little number for uh, our statistics in the Philippines. But one sad thing, although leprosy is curable, still patients and their families um, still uh, uh, experience stigma, stigmatizations and discrimination. Mm -hmm. One of the objectives of the museum is that those who come and visit the museum will come out and know what is leprosy and, and remove this prejudice and stigma that people with leprosy are still human beings and that they're there and have rights of their own and then they can live even normal lives. And those coming from the museum can be an ambassador to propagate that leprosy is a curable disease yes. and we should not stigmatize or discriminate people affected with leprosy. And I think in, in the many years that the museum has been in existence, it has provided a good venue for information and a good venue for people to know what, uh, what is Kulion and um, how the people live here. And, and I can imagine, Dr. Konana, that uh, this museum is going to attract a lot of visitors. Yes. It's going to attract a lot of people. Maybe particularly those who are interested to, to uh, find out about medical history, yes. uh, about medical history of, uh, of uh, leprosy, and how Kulion was a key player or instrumental in the eradication or the finding the cure for this disease. I was amazed and struck at the, the timelines mm -hmm. that are presented in the museum. I didn't realize that the uh, kind of repression, uh, the, the difficulties and the challenges that are faced by the patients, particularly during the initial stage, yeah. during the war, yeah. when uh, a lot of people died because of the military blockade, and, uh, and, and their separation from the family. Uh, Ano po ang, ang, I guess the question that I'd like to, to raise is ano po ang contribution ng history ng Kulyon as a leprosarium at that time? Uh, and how did it evolve into a very progressive community right now? I mean, where's the connection there? Yeah. With the very desperate history to a very progressive community, how did it happen? Yeah. It didn't happen overnight. Uh, as you can see, the first settlers of Kulion, who are sick people with leprosy, were came here uh, on board the Coast Guard cutter in 1906. And it took almost 92 years before the new municipality has been, has, has, has been established. So from that time on, when the first patients came to Kulion, after the elections of the first set of, the, of officials in uh, uh, amongst themselves, among themselves then this takes uh, uh, many, many decades. And that would mean controlling leprosy as a big problem because nobody would, would uh, make an island uh, municipality when leprosy is still uncontrolled. And it is, I think, the role of the Department of Health and the role of the Polion Sanitarium Leprosy Control Program to really control the disease and eliminate it so that it will not be a public health problem. And leprosy and, and Kulion has made a significant contributions as a research center, yes. as a referral center, as a treatment center, mm -hmm. and um, it has such cap capabilities that it turned around the, from an area of darkness due to the disease to a vibrant community right now. Mm -hmm. 
and we have made so much um, um, uh, gains and you know, successes in terms of treatment of leprosy, in terms of chemoprophylaxis, that we are very proud that we don't have new cases of leprosy in the last 13 years. Yes. So, in that way... In the Philippines? No, here in Culion. In the Philippines, we have around 2,000 to 2,500 new cases every year. Okay. Now, in Palawan, uh, some parts of Palawan is also uh, contributing, uh, reporting a number of cases in some other municipalities. But not in Culion anymore. Uh, there's no le new leprosy case here. So for the last 13 years. So what we are trying, what I'm trying to say is that it's the control of the disease that makes the transformations of the island from a present leprosy island to a vibrant community. But the people are forebearers of the descendants, descendants of the early settlers coming from different parts of the country and came here to Culion, sent here to Culion uh, uh, compulsorily because they have the disease. They have the disease. Yeah. I especially I, I, I mm. relaunching ng, ng Mrs. Yeah, Yong, yeah. but also the 10th year anniversary of the hospital itself. The observation that we make is that here in Calamianes, Calamianes, this is go to yeah. hospital. Yes. I mean, but if you're come, if you're from 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 uh, from uh, other another place, it will it looks queer to me because traveling to Kolyon is quite an effort. No? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bakit dito? Ano meron sa hospital mo? Bakit dito na pupunta ang pasyente? Uh, once uh, after we have eliminated the process of public health problem, there should be a continuity of what would be what would be the role of the hospital. The hospital building, the facilities are there, the health workers are there. If the number of patients are going down, what remains are old uh, and disabled patients. There is a growing need in the community of Pulion, which are mostly non-leprosy or non-Hansenites, and the growing populations of island municipalities of Pron, Maswanga, Linapakan, Puyo, and other ones that needs general care. So, 10 years, in 2009, the Culion Sanitarium, which are purely a leprosy hospital mm -hmm. since that time on, was uh, established or there was a law that expanded Culion Sanitarium into Culion Sanitarium and General Hospital. That would mean uh, catering not only for leprosy but for general health services, including emergency, trauma, etc. Mm -hmm. So, through the years, in the last 10 years, um, I've been the medical director of this hospital in, the, in this 10 years' time. We have improved uh, and moved forward in the in the um, uh, becoming a general hospital. And now we are moving to level 2 hospital category. That means we're able to address the general health needs of the people. Okay. Uh, not only for leprosy, but general health needs. Uh, and also including public health. Uh, we have different departments in the hospital. We have space, subspecialty services. So we have like orthopedic services, we have ophthalmology services. Mm -hmm. So we, this needs, uh, this cater the needs, growing needs of the island populations of Culion and the neighboring and the Unfortunately, there is no other hospital that offer such services in this Calamianes yeah, no. group of islands. Or That's Nordicola. why I call it weird because even, yes. even trauma patients, yes, yes. nangyaring aksidente sa Buswanga, which yeah. is very far, far from here, yeah, yeah. dito pa nila dadalhin yes. sa Culion to vote, yeah. di ba? I'm, I'm very happy with the news that uh, uh, related to me by the good governor himself <clears throat> that they have come up with a project that will link uh, Coron and Culion okay. through uh, some sort of a bridge. Mm -hmm. And this is a very important and a very timely project wow. that will affect the northern Palawan not only in terms of tourism mm -hmm. but in terms of health. Ah, because of the accessibility. Yes, this, this makes the general Culion hospital mm -hmm very, very accessible to the island municipalities of Buswanga, Pulion, and oh, that's, that's So I'm, we are really looking forward to be a better service, making the hospital more accessible and more available to the people of Calamianes by having this How space. physically possible would that be? Well, I, they have already the done, yeah, they have already done their study and uh -huh. feasibility. I have talked to some people, and even the good governor, Alvarez, uh, mentioned in one of the meetings, that they are now doing their budgets for feasibility and in the, I think it's not uh, far-fetched in reality that it will happen. And uh, if this happens, the value of the hospital 
to link the Tulion into the other island municipalities in Calamianes. I think this connectivity is a very important project of the, that should be uh, uh, taken on by the national or even the provincial government. Uh, That's exciting, huh? yeah. So I guess I guess uh, uh, we pretty much covered the main topic uh, for this edition of uh, Behind the News. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Gunana, maybe your other other projects on your plane yeah, that yeah. you might want to share with our audience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would like to invite uh, my fellow Palawenos and those who have access to this uh, interview. The, I am inviting you to Culion. Uh, Culion is a different municipality now. It's a beautiful island, a beautiful story to tell. And when you are in Culion, please see the Culion Museum and Archive. This is a pride, not only of Culion, but it's a pride of Palawan. This is um, uh, a pride uh, garnered by being ins uh, ins inscribed into the memories of the world of the UNESCO. One of the two UNESCO inscribed in the Philippines. And uh, with this new reopening of the museum, it highlighted uh, how Culion uh, transformed from being an isolated, dreaded island into a, a new, vibrant municipality, an integrated community, not only within Culion, but within the province and within the national scope. So I thank you for, for this opportunity to, uh, to have, uh, um, to advocate uh, uh, the leprosy, don't be afraid of leprosy in Culion or in, in uh, being, uh, having leprosy elsewhere, seeing leprosy patient, because leprosy is already curable. My message would be that leprosy is curable, treatment is available and free, and we should not stigmatize or discriminate leprosy patients. So God bless you. And thank you, Dr. Kananan, for, warm, for warmly uh, hosting us here in Culion. We really enjoyed our stay. And uh, follow us again next Saturday for another edition of Behind the News, Them to Anda here. See you next week. Palawan News. Probing into the critical issues. Holding authorities accountable. Catalyzing positive change. Behind the news. Join Palawan News. Saturday. 8 in the morning as we discuss in detail the pressing issues in Palawan. Hosted by veteran journalist Redemto Anda. Behind the news. Credible. Independent. Fearless.